Okay, let me set up this next video for you. What you're going to see is a uh, police officer's um, testimony in front of a court of law based on a shooting that occurred in the Midwest. This was a Bonnie and Clyde type couple uh, who, prior to the video you're going to see, had shot two police officers point blank range in a CC's pizza and then they proceeded to a Walmart uh, to attempt to uh, apparently do more damage or kill more police officers. Uh, and this information obviously is not known by the people in the Walmart, but you're going to see a concealed carry permit holder in the Walmart um, take action with regard to these shooters. And so watch the video, and then we'll talk about it afterward. Oh, my partner and I, it was a Sunday, I remember. My partner and I were already in the homicide office conducting follow-up on an unrelated uh, case when we heard the radio broadcast over the Northeast Channel uh, reference the shooting of two police officers at a restaurant and the subsequent officer involved shooting at a Walmart uh, near the restaurant. Uh, my partner and I learned that uh, two officers, officers Beck and Soldo, had been shot at the CC's Pizza while they were eating lunch. And the suspects in that incident had walked to the Walmart store at 201 North Nellis. Once in the store, uh, they shot and killed a civilian who was later identified as Joseph Wilcox. And then from there, a subsequent officer involved shooting occurred between uh, the Millers and the responding police officers, and that uh, Amanda Miller had shot herself and Jared Miller was shot and killed. That would be uh, the Millers there, and uh, right around the first time that we get a, get a chance to see them on video. We'll see uh, them walk southeast from the CC's Pizza crime scene via a camera affixed to the rear of the Walmart store, which faced kind of in a northeast direction. Uh, we'll see Jared still walking ahead of Amanda, and then they'll come around that northeast corner of the store where they proceeded to walk southbound along the store all the way to the entrance. The two will uh, enter the store in the same order. Jared Miller goes in first. Jared comes in. He initially starts yelling loudly about a revolution which has started. Uh, it's at about this point here that uh, Jared Miller fires a warning shot into the ceiling. This draws uh, Mr. Wilcox's attention and he remains focused on Jared as Jared continues to go further into the store. Uh, I believe the separation between Amanda and Jared has caused Joseph Wilcox to not believe that Amanda Miller is with Jared uh, and she goes unnoticed by him. She quickly turns and fires one shot from her Smith & Wesson 9mm handgun and the gunshot is immediately incapacitating and uh, Mr. Wilcox goes down in the aisle. At this point in the store, just to give you a little context, They've only been in the Walmart at this point approximately 30 seconds, and officers are just now beginning to arrive at the CC's Pizza crime scene. This location here, this had the glass ammunition cabinet, in it, which was had the ammunition stored for the Walmart store. And then he obtains a baseball bat from a nearby aisle, which he uses to break the glass on the ammunition cabinet. Jared Miller sorts through the ammunition, and then when he finds the appropriate ammunition, uh, he takes that ammunition. When Officer Brosnahan gets approximately four rows down, uh, Amanda Miller, still armed with her Smith & Wesson handgun, uh, raises it toward Officer Brosnahan, and the two exchange gunfire. Uh, Jared Miller rounds the corner, drops his duffel bag, and then he also begins to engage Officer Brosnahan with gunfire. And at some point in that exchange of fire, was Amanda Miller hit? Yes, uh, Amanda Miller received a gunshot wound to the upper right back. Uh, Sergeant McKenzie requests uh, the next arriving units or any arriving units uh, to take over the video surveillance room at the Walmart uh, so that they can locate the suspects on camera and that they can find out what they're doing in the northwest corner of the store. When the cameras switched over and the officers in the surveillance room were able to update the containment team officers, the first uh, images were able to see in that far northwest aisle uh, depict Amanda Miller. Uh, she's lying down in a semi-prone position. She's armed with a handgun still, and she has that handgun trained directly south toward Officer Corbin and Officer Bethard. Jared is lying in a semi-prone position, and then he ultimately gets up from his position and walks south toward that backpack. There's a backpack, sorry, that was further south of Amanda's location. Uh, when he gets up to walk, it's clear that he's changed clothes since uh, his encounter with Officer Brosnahan. He's now wearing uh, a 
black tactical vest, which has a rifle scabbard attached to the back. Uh, and on the ground adjacent to his position, uh, you can see a pump shotgun. Uh, Jared Miller grabs that backpack and then moves back to Amanda. He takes out a bottle of water for her and he gives her some water before returning to his shooting position at the end of the aisle uh, where he uh, gets in the prone position and then aims his gun uh, east toward Officer Gross and Officer Beal. Uh, Jared Miller gets up from his position and he, he gets up and he pulls that shopping cart out of the way and to the far northwest corner of the store. Uh, at that point, he attempts to get an item uh, off of the shelf. He keeps his right arm extended and the handgun pointed toward Officer Gross and Officer Beal's position. Uh, however, he's focused on getting the item off of the shelf on the north wall. Jared Miller uh, notices Officer Beal and quickly fires one shot toward Officer Beal. Officer Beal quickly fires one shot uh, back toward Jared Miller and then Officer Beal returns to his position of cover uh, so fast that he's not able to see uh, where his shot landed. And at this point is the first time they appear to have any communication with one another. Uh, she manipulates her handgun several times to point toward Jared, then back toward herself. Uh, and then she appears to be uh, trying to manipulate it and change her own grip on the gun, the way she's holding it. Uh, and then ultimately she shoots herself in the right side of the head. So Amanda uh, ultimately shot herself in the head, is that correct? Correct. And what happened after that? Uh, after that, we have uh, numerous other officers arrive on the scene. Uh, they go into the store and they assist in containing the suspects in the far northwest corner of the store. Uh, and they also assist with evacuating numerous citizens who were sheltered in place. And ultimately, uh, a SWAT crisis entry team makes entry and takes both Amanda and Jared into custody in that far northwest corner. Uh, ending the incident. And how long was this um, entire incident, roughly? The incident in Walmart lasted approximately 24 minutes. Okay, a very sad but uh, sobering video. And uh, I would like you to notice uh, several things about this video. Uh, notice, first of all, from the surveillance uh, camera there, you can see uh, the Millers walking with handguns. If you look uh, close enough in that video right there, that video shot, uh, you can see clearly the outline of handgun uh, that they're holding. And then also here on the front walk in the parking lot, you can clearly see uh, that Jared and Amanda both have handguns, or at least Jared's is very clear. You can see Amanda's uh, differently from a different angle right there. And so you notice they both have handguns. They're walking uh, very briskly. They're not pointing them at anybody at this point and they haven't fired any shots. Uh, and so what you wouldn't know as a concealed carry uh, permit holder is that they have already fired those shots. So uh, they enter the store. It's interesting here. Uh, you can clearly see their guns. Let me get to the spot where you can see it. Right here, you can clearly see the gun. The video is fuzzy because of the, the closed circuit TV cameras, but these people would have noticed this gun if they were looking. Uh, the man with the cart buggy who uh, passed by them earlier, he uh, certainly should have noticed and didn't. Uh, he didn't even swing his head around, didn't face him. And so uh, it pays to be alert, not paranoid, but you do need to be alert of your surroundings, especially if you're a concealed carry permit holder. Uh, and But then when he comes in, we'll notice... See if I can get the, the view here. Right there, you can notice he has a handgun. And now this is Joseph Wilcox. He is a concealed carry permit holder in Nevada. And he is standing in the customer service line. Uh, and most of our Walmarts in Louisiana, this would be your McDonald's or your uh, Subway Sub Shop or whatever the food place is uh, on the right side of the store as you're facing, uh, facing the store. But this is their customer service area, returns and all that. And so he's in line. And you'll notice, let me show you something. Yelling loudly about a revolution which has started. He turns to his, the fellow people in line because Jared had yelled, uh, this is a revolution or something to that effect. 
And Mr. Wilcox is laughing about it. He didn't notice he was carrying a gun, first of all, apparently, and then turned and thought it was a funny situation. It was just somebody cutting up or making fun in Walmart and turns and laughs. But now watch his demeanor change. And this is important emotionally for you. It's at about this point here that uh, Jared Miller fires a warning shot into the ceiling. This draws. So now notice, he fires a warning shot, and Joseph Wilcox goes from laughing now to probably frightened, uh, an excited state of uh, emotion uh, to fear, uh, and all those emotions that would overcome you from hearing gunshots at close range, uh, and you don't know really what is going on. And you can notice he jumps up in the air. You'll watch the video for a short second. At this point here that uh, Jared Miller fires a warning shot into the ceiling, this draws. He's kind of hopping around, and then he reaches for his gun with his left hand, which is uh, around his left hip, and he begins to move towards uh, Jared uh, to try and do something about it. So one of the things I'll point out right here uh, he's going to attempt to act on behalf of another, uh, and he is justified under the law because Jared has broken the law. In fact, it's felony crime uh, that he has discharged a weapon uh, in public and then uh, in public on private property. And we already know, they don't know obviously in the video, but we already know that he has killed two police officers. And so uh, if we had that information, we would know that, yes, he definitely uh, intends to kill other people or definitely is in the mindset that he would kill other people if he deemed it necessary. So what we see here is a firearm being discharged. That gives Joseph Wilcox, uh, under the law, the justified and reasonable understanding that death or serious bodily harm will occur to someone would or can occur or was about to occur. And so he's absolutely justified under the law to take action. Now, should he take action? And that's what we need to talk about. Because just because you can take action doesn't mean you necessarily should. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe Joseph Wilcox is a hero. I believe he made a bad mistake, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I absolutely believe he's a hero trying to act on behalf of these other people here and trying to stop these people because he doesn't know whether mass murder is about to take place or whether it's an act of terrorism, he doesn't have that information. And as the video said, it's only been about 30 seconds uh, that these people have been in the store. And so he's got very little information to work with, but the information he does have says this is a credible, deadly threat. And he has chosen now to take action. Uh, but you can see he's very uh, excited and or fearful. He kind of hops up and down, and then he goes and reaches for his weapon. And we'll see what... Uh, happens next you can see right here let me play it where I can pause it just on Jared as Jared okay so you have Jared that is the bad guy with a gun as Jared continues and then you have Amanda which is the bad lady with a gun now Joseph Wilcox is coming from the front of the store. The camera angle is going to change, but he basically comes between and tries to get behind, uh, tries to get behind Jared here. Watch. To go further into the store, uh, I believe the separation. The angle between... changes. You see, and Jared kind of peels off. Amanda and Jared has caused Joseph, and he does not notice Amanda. Wilcox to not believe that Amanda Miller is with Jared uh, and she goes unnoticed by him. So you notice he was actually behind her. She notices him she, and she turns and shoots and he has raised his gun and he is about to shoot. If you can tell by that, uh, I know it's a fuzzy screen, but he has raised his gun. He's about to shoot and she shoots and kills him on the spot immediately. And so he loses his life. Uh, for making the choice to try and act on behalf of another and uh, neutralize the situation. And he wasn't able to do that. Now, again, hindsight is twenty twenty. It's very easy for me or for you to look at this video and say, well, I would have done this, I would have done that. And one of the things we can look at and see is that everybody knows the aisle is clear. And when he was walking behind her, the aisle was clear. She was the only one going that way behind that guy with a shopping cart 
Everybody else was frantic. They were leaving the store. They were going the other way. And so uh, my guess, just from uh, experience and then seeing some of these things, is Joseph Wilcox, that is the good guy with the concealed carry permit, he kind of got tunnel vision. He, he focused in on Jared, the bad guy with the gun, who he thought was alone, and he wasn't searching and assessing the situation. He wasn't aware of his surroundings, and he missed this lady thinking she was just a shopper. But he should have been clued in that she was by herself going the wrong way against, you know, swimming upstream. Everybody else was going the other way to get out of Dodge, and she wasn't. Uh, and he paid for it with his life. The other thing I want you to notice uh, as the video went on is that at 24 minutes transpired by the time uh, we get to the situation where SWAT comes in. Numerous citizens who were sheltered in place. You see the SWAT team there, and they come in, and they uh, take care of Jared, uh, take him into custody, and I believe Amanda killed herself uh, is what we found out there. But 24 minutes, and so that is an eternity plus an eternity. 30 seconds is a long time when shots are fired. It seems like forever. But 24 minutes is a very, very long time uh, when shots are being fired and your life is on the line. So... What I want to impress upon you as a concealed carry permit holder is you have the right under the law to act on behalf of others, but it's not always necessarily the right uh, choice. And what I do want you to remember is when these bad guys with guns entered into the Walmart and Joseph Wilcox took action, they shot into the ceiling. And I know you say, well, they still shot. I agree. They still shot. You could have made the choice either way. And I'm not saying you made a bad or a good choice. Uh, he made the choice that he made, and he paid for it with his life. However, as a father and a husband, uh, I would have made a different choice. At least I hope I would have. I can't tell you when fear excites me. I, I hope I have enough training, and I hope I have enough uh, presence of mind uh, from past experiences in um, critical situations to where I would have the presence of mind uh, to do something different. Now, the best thing to do is to slow down, calm yourself if you can, and think about the situation of what is actually going on. Yes, they have firearms. Yes, they fire warning shots. Are they willing to use them? Yes. But one of the obvious factors is they could have killed a lot of people walking in the front door. They could have killed a lot of people in that uh, customer service area. They could have killed everybody that they walked by walking in on the sidewalk, and they didn't do that for some reason. And so those facts have to roll and you have to process them very quickly when you're in a situation like this. What is their intent? Not that you are trying to determine their intentions whether your actions are justified. Just them having a gun and firing a warning shot, period, and acting in the way they were and yelling in the way they were, that's enough to excite the fear of a reasonable and rational person and you absolutely can use deadly force at that point. Even before the warning shot, I would say, it would be proven in a court of law that these guys were dressed uh, tactically. They had tactical gear on them. They had bags with them. Uh, and they had guns exposed that they were walking into a Walmart with. And they were up to no good. And it would have excited the fear of the normal rational person if they had known all those details and seen all those details. And so you would be justified under the law to use deadly force. However, when you start to process the details, they are not just shooting people mass murder style. They're on a mission doing something. They're walking in uh, briskly, going somewhere to do something. Now, it doesn't mean that they're not going and they've picked somebody out. They may have picked somebody out in the store. We don't know that at that point. But my point behind it is you don't have to act uh, the way he acted, potentially. I personally would have immediately called 911 They probably already had a call about it. Maybe not. You would have called 911 I would have set back assess the situation, seeing if uh, you know they started pointing the gun at individuals or if they were still carrying it down by the side, pointed at the ground in a relatively safe direction. Uh, and then I would have made a choice depending on how quickly uh, police officers had arrived. They were just arriving to the CC's Pizza 30 seconds into the, the Walmart event. So they probably would have been there within a minute uh, from the CCs, I'm guessing, I'm not sure. It looked relatively close. Just depends on all the other uh, logistics and circumstantial uh, things going on. But they would have been there relatively quick. Now, 
If he would have killed somebody, absolutely, you immediately go into action. If he would have started firing at people or just randomly firing, absolutely, go into action. Again, I'm not saying Joseph Wilcox did the right or the wrong thing. He did what he chose to do. But uh, as a husband and a father, as a single man, I might have made a different choice. But as a husband and a father, especially if they were with me, I would have chosen to get my family out to safety. That would have been my number one priority. And then my number one priority is going home to them. Now, if he's coming in just guns blazing, I have no choice. I'm going to act on behalf of others, and I'm going to act immediately on behalf of others. But sometimes you just have to let law enforcement do their job uh, and let them show up uh, in the reasonable amount of time that they showed up, which is a very, very fast response time, uh, and do their job and let SWAT handle the situation as they did. Or you're prepared, even if you didn't get shot, you're prepared to be there in a 24-minute possibility of a standoff, and that's with professional police officers versus just a concealed carry permit. Uh, so you'll notice, again, Joseph Wilcox, he paid for it with his life. And what I want you to see dramatically out of this video is that when you make a choice to employ your weapon and you make a choice to attempt to end a deadly situation, you may pay for it with your own life. And so two things I want you to know. Really think about the choices you make and try to learn to calm yourself, especially in these type of situations. But second of all, get training. The concealed carry class that you're attending right now uh, and that you're going through is not enough training, not enough firearm training, it's not enough situational training uh, for you to act properly in one of these uh, desperate life-threatening situations or critical incidents. You have to have more gun training, and that's not just going to a static range and shooting. Find qualified instructors. We love to help you. Other instructors in the Louisiana area or around the nation, there are great uh, classes that you can take that will put you in tactical situations uh, where you have to think and shoot using training ammunition, that you can gain more experience uh, and more exposure uh, to moving and shooting and assessing threats and all those uh, things that go into uh, making a calculated risk type of situation uh, be a little more uh, predictable. At any rate, it's a very difficult situation. As I said, the man lost his life. It's a terrible situation. He is a hero in my book and I'm sure in your book as well but hopefully you learned something from this second video as well. Now you can go on to uh, video number three, Child Access Prevention.